Hello everybody, today is the 2nd of August, 2010, and it's not often that I give trading ideas, and this is a play that I will not be making, I just see that the technicals do look like it has a good risk-reward play. So I want to go over what risk-reward really means go over these uh, fundamentals stocks they go up and they go down I, that, that's just so obvious and so basic but a lot of people really don't consider the fact that when they go down really big that can make a lot of people lose a lot of money and on the uh, flip side they go up big then you can win a lot and obviously if you short and it goes down you can win big and you short it goes up you can lose big that's how the game is designed and you get to decide what it is that you uh, want to assess your risk if you uh, find stop losses and that's part of calculated gambling for you can understand some calculations based on well there's a technical level here this number uh, signifies this and that, those that's data that is reliable, at least reliable as in you can base that the moving average is here, the Fibonacci level is here, the MACD stats stay that state this and so on and so on. And then you got the chances of which it's going to be a successful play. And you really don't know all the odds. Do you know for sure if you're a sixty five percent favorite to win on the trade or seventy percent or fifty five? A lot of times you can only make guesses or calculated guesses to what the probabilities are going to come up with. The next uh, little tidbit is bonds are a form of creating fiat notes. And thus, when you create money, you write up treasury notes, which are pretty much loans, thus creating debt. So when you play this game, whether it's TLT, whether it's SLV, whether it's uh, POT, whether it's uh, SPY, XLF, the list goes on. You are doing the same thing and risking fiat dollars to win a larger sum of money. And sometimes you win sometimes you lose. The next one is bonds often counter trend stocks. And uh, we see that they often counter trend and obviously the stock market is nowhere near its uh, lows. So oftentimes it does, it doesn't mean that it always does. For when the stocks were caving in in the months of May and into June, we can see that it had a uh, nice little gain the movement that it had before the massive rally this happened after the major panic from the October and November lows in the stock market so sometimes you can notice that one may be a lagging indicator to the other but that's a general thing so today the bond market was down while the stock market was going higher the next little fundamental note is price movement is heavily based on large banks meaning that the price movement going way up or way down aka this move in here both to the upside and to the downside its recent rally that it is encountered during this uh, spring and summer is from the heavily based banks transferring money from point a to point B. Money goes from bonds to stocks or from stocks to bonds. And if you know it's going to go one direction because you have information on the price movement, then you can have information that would increase your mathematical chances. That's why this game is a skillful form of gambling. Even if you are a long-term winner, that uh, for every 100 you put in, you're going to get back 103. That does mean that you are betting on an uncertain chance. Of course, the odds favor you win. That's what the mathematical odds would state. 
And uh, that's why when you trade with technicals, they can uh, give you great track records based on in the past using key Fibonacci levels here or key VWAPs, key uh, moving averages, anything that you can put together. A lot of it has done well in the past. That doesn't mean they always will, but as of today, the technicals still are a very reliable source and thus it's like playing a gamble. Sometimes you want to understand your risk versus your reward. Well, that was a pretty long intro. That's like five, six minutes. But you know what? It's worth it. It is totally worth it. Now the play. And like I say, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this game. I'm not playing it. I just want to uh, show you how one would look for opportunities and understand how they can uh, be good on a risk-reward level. This orange line represents a volume weighted average price from its 123 highs at the start of 2008. And as the market was caving in, it uh, was declining at a very rapid pace. It had some resistance at this level here and it uh, obviously retraced back down to the downside where it made a double bottom towards this level. So now it comes back to this uh, second level, which obviously had this big Fibonacci level, which we'll go over in a little while too. But it got towards this level, had a little bit of a pullback, and then accelerated. This green line is the volume weighted average since this particular low in towards here. Therefore, when it had its pullback from this Fibonacci and Throughout this uh, moving average here, or this VWAP here, it found support at the rising VWAP from the lows. It uh, found the support on the VWAP towards here and off to the races. Now, what you don't see here is where the prices were. This is close only. This May 6th date, it got up to 100 spot, 100 even. And it gets to that level. And it comes back. But what I was really impressed with was how it was able to hold this range and then create another breakout where the previous level of resistance became a level of support. So it's showing strength within the uh, market. And I said on a video uh, back when I don't have it on there anymore, but it was. Uh, that I like this, I was thinking this move higher had a good probability because of how it was holding this range. It's, it never violated any of its higher lows. It's still on a close only, it still has yet to have made a lower low. So that's showing strength. And, and the play would require a lower low. And that is at 96.50. A lot of people will say you don't want to buy on or on weakness, which is what you would essentially be doing is waiting for a pullback down to this 96.50 area. And when this happens, some might say, well, once it gets there, you want to see maybe uh, some sort of 50 moving average on one of the time frames roll over or a five day, which is a way of using skill to understand your risk reward but just because you're buying on weakness doesn't mean you can't use the same principles of a stop loss like you would with buying on strength. For this Fibonacci from this high to this low is this area here. So the next Fibonacci area would be about 92.50. And from there, that's an area where you may want to encounter a level of support or a level of a stop loss. If you're getting it at 96.50, and you put a stop at say 93 or 92 and a half, then your essential risk is a little under 5%. And you now got all this clutter here at 96.50, three different things cluttering, and it's actually higher than that. You also got the 100 day moving average, which is not shown on this uh, chart. But if you connect this high, with the lows that it encountered in the earlier part of the previous decade, 23, 24, 25-ish or so, which is a bottom of 82.50, you get exponential Fibonacci at 105.60 and 96.10. 
So 9610 is very, very close. So therefore, the 10560 on the way down, it became a level of resistance. It built up this range, which was where the original resistance came into play. So therefore, a breakout of this level here on Fibonacci, taking the low to the high using the 161.8, gives us a price objective at around 106.5 also. So therefore, a risk would be one for 96.50 to win about 10 profit, or in that ballpark would be the expected amount. And that doesn't mean that it might only get up to 104 or 103, and the play may even break down because if, say, you have a fall down to these key moving averages and it only gets up to 98 or even, even doesn't even get that far and ends up falling, then you would notice that the moving averages would start to roll over, and then you'd want to see if they are used as a level of resistance and thus the markets would be testing these big lows, which eventually I see is going to happen. But the price movement is heavily based on banks. And I'd have no idea the real reasons why it would be the case for all I realize is that the Fibonacci's and the moving averages state that it's at a large area. And historically, technicals have had great track records in the past. Now, if you do choose to make this play, and I really don't care if you do or you do not, I really consider myself more on this, on this particular video in explaining game theory more than anything. Well, no, not more than anything, but game theory along with how the system works. Those are the two key things that I'm really focusing on within this video. So if you're making the play, how are you going to assess risk and how are you going to assess reward? Because I'm not, I'm not going to come back on here and say, okay, it's time to uh, sell or profit take up here if we have a good rally. And I'm not going to say it's time to uh, or put a stop loss. And I really don't care what ends up happening. Because whatever happens is what reality gives. You can try to make your own analysis for what's going to happen. And sometimes you'll be right. But what actually happens is the fact. And as uh, Brian Shannon in his videos from Alpha Trends has stated, it is only price that pays. So even if the fundamentals state that something should happen, if we're down to like 92 the price says it's 92, and if you continue holding, it could go down to 90, 91, or 84. And obviously, price paying, you could go to 106. I'm going to sell, and then, oh my, it's up to 135 now. I made a bad sale. Well, that's what the price states, and that's part of the game. Sometimes you're not going to get the best play, and sometimes you will. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a great day.